In this video, I am going to discuss about outsourcing. Outsourcing refers to the practice of hiring another company or individual to perform a task or a set of tasks that are normally done in-house. This can involve tasks that are considered non-core to a company's operations, such as manufacturing, IT support or customer service. Outsourcing can take place domestically within the same country or internationally across borders. Now let's talk about the competencies. When it comes to outsourcing, this is a very important topic. There are two types of competencies. Core competencies, non-core competencies. These are also called threshold competencies. Core competencies. Core competencies are the unique capabilities that a company possesses that give a competitive advantage. These are the key strengths that define the company and set it apart from its competitors. Core competencies typically include the company's unique blend of knowledge, skills and expertise in certain areas, as well as its ability to develop and maintain key relationships with customers, suppliers and partners. For example, let's think about a software development company. Their main competency is to design and develop softwares. That's how they compete in the industry. Now let's talk about the non-core competencies. Non-core competencies are activities that are necessary for a company to operate but are not considered to be key to its success. These activities may include tasks that are considered routine or administrative in nature such as accounting, payroll or data entry. Non-core competencies can also refer to areas where a company lacks expertise or resources such as IT support or manufacturing. For an example, for a software development company, accounting, payroll, cleaning, catering, these are non-core competencies. These are not activities that will earn revenue for the company. For a software company, designing and developing the softwares will be the core competency. In outsourcing, companies often choose to outsource non-core competencies so that they can focus their resources on their core competencies and maintain their competitive advantage. Outsourcing non-core competencies can help companies reduce costs, access specialized skills and resources, and free up time and resources to focus on their core business activities. Very important thing to note is that never outsource core competencies. There are many types of outsourcing. These are the main types. Offshoring, nearshoring, onshoring. Offshoring refers to the outsourcing to a company or individual located in a different country, usually to take advantage of lower labor costs. Nearshoring refers to outsourcing to a company or individual located in a nearby country, often for proximity and cultural similarities. Onshoring refers to the bringing a previously outsourced job or task back in-house, either to a different department or location within the same company. These are the main reasons why outsourcing is popular. Cost saving Outsourcing can help companies reduce costs by taking advantage of lower labor costs in other companies. Access to specialized skills and resources as well as access to a wider pool of talent and expertise. This is an advantage when it comes to outsourcing. Increased efficiency and ability to focus on core business activities. This can help companies streamline their operations, reducing inefficiencies and freeing up resources to focus on core business activities. Risks and challenges of outsourcing. Loss of in-house expertise. If the business decided to outsource their non-core competencies, it will be difficult to grow the expertise in-house. That business will lose the advantage in the long term. Transaction costs. When it comes to outsourcing, there will be different types of costs. We will be talking about this later in this video. Confidentiality. Since the business has to give up their information and data to a third party, the confidentiality of those information will be in danger. 
communication difficulties and cultural differences. Some companies will outsource their non-core competencies to offshoring companies. Since the distance between the two countries and the cultural differences, this will create challenges when it comes to communication. Loss of control. If a company decides to outsource their non-core competencies to a third-party company, they will lose the control. Transaction costs. These are the costs associated with establishing and maintaining an outsourcing relationship. There are three types of transaction costs. Negotiation costs, monitoring costs, enforcement costs. Negotiation costs. Negotiation is the process of reaching a mutually acceptable agreement between the outsourcing company and the outsourcing provider. This involves discussing the terms and conditions of the outsourcing contract including the scope of work, delivering schedules, pricing and quality standards. For example, negotiating the initial outsourcing contract including the scope of work, delivery schedules and pricing. Renegotiating the contract if necessary, such as if the scope of work changes or the provider's performance needs to be improved. Resolving disputes that arise during the outsourcing relationship, such as disagreements over quality or delivery schedules. Monitoring costs. Monitoring is the process of tracking and measuring the outsourcing provider's performance to ensure that they are meeting the agreed upon standard and delivering the services in accordance with the contract. For example, establishing a reporting system to track the provider's performance, such as regular status reporters or performance dashboards. Conducting regular performance reviews to assess the provider's performance and identify areas for improvement. Auditing the provider's work to ensure compliance with the quality standards and delivery schedules outlined in the contract. Enforcement costs. Enforcement is the process of ensuring that the outsourcing provider is meeting the agreed upon standards and delivering the services in accordance with the contract. This may involve taking corrective action if the provider is not meeting the standards, such as renegotiating the contract, reducing the scope of work or terminating the outsourcing relationship. For example, Renegotiating the contract if the provider is not meeting the standards, such as if the quality of their work is not up to agreed level. Taking corrective action if necessary, such as reducing the scope of work or terminating the outsourcing relationship if the provider is not meeting with the standards. Resolving disputes that arise during the outsource relationship, such as disagreements over quality or delivery schedules. In conclusion, negotiation, monitoring and enforcement are important aspects of the outsourcing contract and are essential for ensuring that the outsourcing relationship is successful. It is important to carefully consider these factors when making the decision to outsource and to develop strategies to minimize risks and ensure that the outsourcing relationship runs smoothly. Simply this means before outsourcing, these costs will be identified and analyzed. Now let's talk about alternatives to outsourcing. Shared service centers. Shared service centers are centralized units within an organization that provide common and support services to multiple business units or departments. The purpose is to improve the efficiency, reduce costs and standardize processes by centralizing support functions such as finance, human resources, procurement and IT. This is also called internal outsourcing, which means the non-core competence activities are outsourcing but to an internal service center within the organization, operates as an internal service provider and is responsible for providing services to the different business units within the organization. Shared service centers are often used to large organizations that have multiple business units or subsidiaries in different locations. Very important thing to note is that shared service centers are used for large organizations which have multiple divisions or business units. Let's talk about the advantages of shared service centers. 
centralized services which means shared service centers which are managing the non-co-competence activities of the organization. Take advantage of economies of scale. Since shared service centers are used in large organizations or multinational organizations, they can take the advantage of economies of scale. This will reduce the cost of their operations. Reduce duplication of effort. Rather than having the same department in each division or business unit, now one center can manage all these works. This will reduce the duplication of the same work or the same activity. Allowing the different business units to focus on their core competencies, which we know already how the non-core competence activities are processing by the shared service center. Reduce headcounts. Number of employees can be reduced. This will reduce the cost to the business. Disadvantages of shared service centers Resistance to change Employees in the different business units may resist the changes that come with centralizing support functions, especially if they are used to working with their own local support teams. This can lead to resistance, frustration and a lack of buy-in from employees. Loss of local expertise By centralizing support functions, some local expertise may be lost as employees may no longer have direct access to support teams who are familiar with their specific needs and challenges. Communication and coordination issues Shared service centers can sometimes face challenges when it comes to communication and coordination with the different business units which can lead to misunderstanding and inefficiencies. Implementation costs Establishing and shared service centers can be expensive as it requires significant investments in technology, processes and infrastructure. Additionally, there may be costs associated with retraining employees and restructuring the organization. Reduced flexibility. Shared service centers can sometimes struggle to accommodate the unique needs of different business units which can limit their flexibility and responsiveness. Quality control. With support functions centralized, it can sometimes be challenging to ensure that the services provided by the shared service centers meet the quality standards of the different business units. Now let's talk about another alternative to outsourcing, network organization. These entities are connected and work together to achieve common goals. These entities can include companies, organizations, individuals or other types of stakeholders. In a network organization, the relationships between entities are not hierarchical but rather collaborative and decentralized. There is often no clear central authority and decision making is distributed among the network participants. Network organizations are often used in situations where traditional hierarchical structures are not suitable, such as in industries that require agility and collaboration, such as technology or consulting. Advantages of network organizations include increased flexibility and responsiveness, as well as the ability to tap into a wider pool of resources and expertise. They also encourage innovation and can lead to more efficient and effective solutions. However, network organizations can also present challenges such as a lack of clear decision-making authority, coordination difficulties and difficulties in achieving consensus among participants. Flexible staffing. This is also an alternative to outsourcing. Flexible staffing is a human resources strategy that involves using a mix of permanent employees and temporary or contract workers to meet the changing needs of a business. This approach allows companies to quickly ramp up or down their workforce as needed and to be more responsive to changes in demand or market conditions. These are the advantages of flexible staffing, cost saving, increased flexibility, improved quality of hire. There are also disadvantages of flexible staffing, reduced job security, decreased employee morale, difficulties in integration. Now let's recap today's video. We discussed about outsourcing. 
there are different types of outsourcing on show off show near show and we talked about the competencies co competencies non co competencies very important thing to notice that never outsource co competencies then we talked about the transaction costs there are three types of transaction costs negotiation monitoring enforcing then we discussed about alternatives to outsourcing shared service centers this is also called the internal outsourcing flexible staffing network organization thank you for watching see you in the next video